Into the light on a Friday. Yes, it is Friday. We're at the unit first thing this morning. Bright and early, but I'm starting to develop a stutter, stutter, stutter. So, the first thing I want to carry on with today is get this chimney in position. It looks pretty good. I've already started the weld around here. I've got most, well, I'm a quarter of the way around. Nice, easy going, nice, tight little bead therapeutic really is so I'm gonna get that done and then you know I always give myself like two or three jobs in the morning and I generally only get one of them done so I was gonna say I'm gonna get the timber cut for the top of this boil kettle as well and maybe get it fitted but we'll see we're gonna play it by ear folks it's all gonna be au naturel <laughs> So the fit on this isn't absolutely great, so every now and then I come to a pretty big gap and using this uh, 0.6 millimeter rod, you know, you really have to absolutely stuff it in there. In fact, it's one millimeter, not 0.6, one millimeter. And then underneath, I've got a piece of copper just laid flat to try and take some of the heat out. But as you can see, it's still, it's starting to distort so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Uh, maybe it'll bend back So I'm going to go on the inside, clean off the coking because I'm not backing this and then I'll re-weld on the inside just to fuse the metal together at a lower amperage and that shouldn't come through on the other side because I've already laid a relatively thick weld bead so we're talking two or three millimetres in total thickness which will allow me to fuse the inside without burning through, you know, get, achieving full penetration and uh, coking it up. So uh, let's carry on, roll time lapse. The plan now is to make a hinged lid. So uh, I've cut some, I've cut two pieces of angle. See the distortion here from the welding. So the couple of pieces of angle there, hopefully, will give some rigidity to this edge. We're going to stick a piece of maybe timber on there or something. I don't know to firm that up and glue it on. And. Uh, We've got some stainless steel hinges here. So fingers crossed, this is going to work. Okay, as you can see, the lid's coming together nicely. That looks good. And over here, we're just doing the opposing side, the piece that has on the chimney. But we've just had a visit from the postman. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Mr. Postman. So I wonder what the postman has brought us today, yeah. Let's just find out. It is the pump. Well, I never, Trevor. It comes with a freaking plugage. Some fittings. Right, well. 
central heating pump, three speed. It's a uh, Katsu, which I think is, yes, yeah, Chinese. I thought it might have been Japanese. These aren't super powerful pumps, but they are mag drive. So I'm hoping it can recirc the glycol, but if there is, res it's not gonna burst the cooling jackets, basically. That's what we don't want. Doesn't burst radiators, does it? So, uh, anyway, that's that. These are the control boxes to house the electronics for the fermentation control and cold room control. So we've got a box full of those. So I think, well, we've got to wait for some more electronics, but as soon as they arrive, we can start building the control panels. We're gonna have this up and running in a couple of weeks. I know it. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> The jangling of keys. No, I'm not on the school run. I'm going to a tool station to pick up some plumbing parts so we can actually get this glycol system plumbed in and pressure tested today. Yes, Friday. Am I going to be able to achieve that? Good question. What I've managed to do is complete the lid for the boil kettle. Looks smart. And then I've also pickled, you might say, the lid for the HLT and the mash tun. So everything is ready. Uh, all the staining's been removed, apart from a little bit of brown stain in there, which I can't seem to shift. But we'll sort that out, another dirts. So I'm gonna just nip up to the unit, uh, to the pub, should I say. Tell Stuart that uh, I'm gonna leave the keys with him because Gemma needs the car to collect the children. And then I'm going to go in the van and collect the fittings from Tool Station. You come in, let's go. Just a slight delay. Gemma's left her keys at home, so when she picked up the kids, she was locked out. I've had to come and let her in. <laughs> I am the gatekeeper. What is the password? Pretty please. That's Moonface. <laughs> Moon, fuck off and get it off the camera now. <laughs> Right, I'm back with all the tackle. The UK is getting terrible for traffic. I've only travelled 18 miles, works up and back. It took me an hour and a half. Got all the fittings. I believe I'm gonna need to install this glycol system. It mainly consists of elbows and tears. It. and lots of ISO valves so let's get them installed half past seven folks quarter to eight maybe I have pretty much got all of this plumbed in so we've got ISO valve motorized valve on each one you can see that they're nicely plumbed We've got spares here to run out to a cold room. So what I'm gonna do now is a leak test before I insulate them, of course. It'd be silly to do it the other way around. And then we just disconnect the tanks, which is two connectors on each tank, pull them forwards and insulate. So I've not tried this yet. I'll pop you on the tripod and we'll see if it works. <laughs> right, not sure how much of this you can see, but uh, I've cracked the top of the lid. I'm about to plug in the pump. Let's see what happens. Hey, Abby. Right, it's not self priming, but what I've actually done is I've left this little tab here to allow me to take that off and just prime it with a jug, so we'll go ahead and do that. Oops, some water. 
pour it in the hole. Right, we have something happening. That connection's not in properly. Can you hear? How's that look? Of course, this should be turned the other way and squirt the jets onto the condenser unit to help with circulation and remove any icing up that's happened on there. Right, one last thing. I've added a pressure gauge here to the outlet side of the pump. So hopefully, if I just bleed it a little bit, there we go, then what I'm hoping to do, this is that air bubble going through the system. So there's now no liquid flowing, or well, there won't be when I get this right. Right, they're all isolated. So that's not reading on here. Second speed, we're just up to about two or three PSI. And then top speed. Yeah, nothing to worry about. About four PSI, which that's perfectly acceptable for this system, even on full speed. So I can't see us having any issues with any pipe work bursting. Well that's it, now it is definitely late enough. Gemma's just providing a little bit extra ice for the pub because we're all iced out. Yeah, and it's time we went home, so. Productive day, glycol system operational, even though there's no glycol in it. So next week we'll get some glycol and well, we'll try chilling something down maybe. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Wimp, 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 wimp